Hello, I'm Chris Slisher, and welcome to Turning of the Wheel, an intelligent, lively discussion about astrology, art, and spiritual adventure. Timing is everything, and as the great wheel turns, we are best prepared when we are best informed. Join me as I explore concepts that allow us to broaden our view of the world. You'll hear interesting topics, meet fascinating guests, and discover who you really are. Using the time-tested practices of astrology, you'll learn how to accept change as the great wheel of life turns. Astrology, art, and spiritual adventure on Turning of the Wheel TV with Chris Flisher. Hello and welcome to Turning of the Wheel. As you know, this is a show about astrology, art, and spiritual adventure. And that, those three topics sort of give me an opportunity to explore a lot of different topics. Obviously, astrology is my main passion, but I like a lot of other things that go with it, what I call adjunct modalities, I call them. And I got my friend here, Nicole Magic, who's going to be talking today about psychokinesis, which to me, I'm not quite sure what it is, even though I should know, but I'm going to leave it to the expert to tell us all about it. Nicole, welcome to Turning of the Wheel. Great to have you. Thanks, tell us Chris. about psychokinesis and what it can do for us. Okay, so when we're looking at psychokinesis, we're looking at manipulating matter with our minds. Oh, manipulating matter with our minds. Right. So mind over matter, literally. Literally. Oh, wow. That's what psychokinesis is. Yes. And uh, so what would that entail? That would, uh, I mean, is this the sort of thing you hear about people when they sort of, um, you know, like I, I envision something like a, a car falling on something, and then all of a sudden they're able to pick themselves up for the car because they get this sudden jolt of, of adrenaline. It's sort of like the... Right, the Superman strength. Superman syndrome, I guess. But this can also work in other ways as well, too, right? Right, so what you're doing is you're tapping into the quantum field, creating a window of opportunity to then change the state of the matter that Which you're is with. literally changing the at, at, at atomic structure? Pretty much. Of shaking up whatever's happening. Shaking and it so up. And so how does this, oh, how would you apply this and how do you, how does this work? Right, so um, I do a workshop with forks. Forks. So we do fork bending. I'm sure you've heard of spoon I bending. Yep, it's the yep, same yep. thing. It's just a different utensil. Mm -hmm. And when you're utilizing that and showing people how to access that quantum field in order to bend mm -hmm. the fork or the spoon. You're teaching people, that's what I do, I teach people how to Open access that state. Mm -hmm. And then once that window is felt, you can't unlearn that. And so that's the whole point is getting into that state and then lengthening that state to be able to do more. Oh, I see. So be more efficient within that time. So is, right. it, is, it, is it a challenge to reach that state? Is it a difficult thing to reach that state where you're able to open the window? It all depends on the person. Ah. But I do have a 100% success rate with all of my participants. Really? And people learn different ways. And I, do di I cover different techniques in order to get people to recognize that state and okay. then be able to hold it. Mm -hmm. The fact that I can see energy around people I actually watch people and I see when they get into that state and sometimes I'm in my head saying, oh my God, bend it now, bend it now. Right, right, right. <laughs> and it's just getting them to understand that because people doubt themselves. So this is an exercise in people being able to trust, trust their intuition because there's a little bit of an intuitive part that you have to be able to feel that window open up and then trust yourself to say, okay, yes, it is time, without getting in your head. Ah, that's the trick. That's yes. probably the biggest part. Anybody has the ability within themselves to do this. This is And correct. this is simply a matter of trying to, uh, sort of harnessing an internal power, for lack of a better word, harnessing internal power to allow you to do a, uh, imagine something happening physically to something else through the power of your mind. Right. So what can we do with that? <laughs> would you like to try? I would. Okay. Well, I have these forks that okay. I brought with me. So I'm going to have you actually These take are forks, regular standard forks, right? So this is just a, well, good, a heavy fork. It is a heavy fork. It this is, is like a like restaurant grade. Fork. Yes. Oh, so, yeah, go ahead and give it some. You can't. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. No, I've bent my forks at home. I bent my spoons at home in, in moments, I'm sure, in my life. They're much thinner. I mean, these you are can definitely, see. These are definitely, and so you're going to bend the this. The thickness there. Yeah, you're going to bend this. Yeah, you can try with me. Okay. So 
There are different techniques, but what you really, have you ever worked with energy before? Yeah, I've done some work, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so it goes along that line where we're going to run the energy. So what I'm ask you to do is, if you've worked with energy before, whether you're pulling that energy up to the top of your head and then down out your hands, you're focusing that energy right into that fork, huh. okay? And as you're doing that, you're feeling it intensify and intensify and then there's going to be this strange feeling that all of a sudden you're going to feel like it's malleable and you can bend it. So like if I, you can see how much force I'm putting on this. Mm -hmm. Now if I actually access and go into the quantum field, bringing the energy through me, I'm going to do a little bit of that within myself right now as I'm talking and I'm focusing that energy right into this fork. Interesting. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that as I feel that because it's starting to get ready to open. And then once you actually get there, you can then bend it very easily. Wow. Okay. Um, so when I teach this, I mean, that's very thick. How did and you, you can feel there, there's it's, it's heat. heat there from the friction. Right. And that's just your own energy saying, I'm going to bend this. Now. I'm going to bend this right now. And you can, you can do it with the tines, I mean, the tines are very, you can feel how, how hard so those you're doing, are. So you're not in that state, and all of a sudden no. you turn the state on and then boom. Right. Yep, you just, you turn it on. Um, so different techniques will work with different people. So I've worked with energy for a while now, so I can turn it on and off a little bit here. Um, but the whole point of why do we do this, when I showed my kids how to do this, we lost a lot of silverware, forks. <laughs> <laughs> forks, spoons, everything. But it's really to show the power that you have within you to change something. And when you focus that, just think about when you're doing energy healing. Somebody who is really accessing that state is facilitating that energetic. So it's sort of a concentration of energy coming into a single spot whereby you have the you have the power to wield that and empty it. it. And so that would be, a, this is a metaphor for some way, in some ways of changing your life. You're, you're at a fork in the road <laughs> and you right. want to change your uh, position and you could generate that into that or say you want, I mean it doesn't have to be about bending a fork or levitating your grandmother off a chair. It has to do with um, being able to, to, to take that energy and refine it in a way so it's concentrated and focused in an area where it's going to do the most good for you. Right. Wow. So you're bringing, you're, you're exciting the energy into that space. Mm -hmm. So if, if the cells of the body need to heal, they're going to entrain up to a higher vibrational state, they'll, they'll sloughing up. off mm -hmm. any of the, the negative stuff that, okay. that might be sickening the cell or, or you know, mm -hmm. worsening it. Wow. And so this, and how would you use this aside from bending forks, obviously? I mean, it's, you would use this probably your, your home unbending all the ones that got bent right. or rebending them back to where they were. Um, how does, how do you find people using this the best? I'll give you an example that just popped into my head as you were asking that question where um, when I worked in chemistry, mm -hmm. I was sitting in a meeting. I got called out of a meeting by one of, um, I ran a team and then I had uh, a counterpart that also ran another team. So one of his people had called me and said, we need you here right now. One of the girls from another department was having a diabetic fit okay. mm -hmm. and um, she needed her insulin. So they had called the EMTs. Meanwhile, where myself and the other guy, we're walking back to go over there very quickly, right? and. I didn't know exactly what was going on, so I just started running the energy. And I just started building up that energy within myself. When we got there, I put my hands on her. And she immediately, very excitable state, calmed down. I was able to talk to her. If I took my hands off of her, she would get very excitable oh. and jumpy and all over the place. So I just kept my hands on her. and. Afterwards, I was asked, what the heck did you do, Nicole? Because it obviously worked. It, yeah, there was such a dramatic change. And, you know, they said she was you know, jumping up on the desk because she wasn't in her 
She right was sort of going into a, into a diabetic coma. Yeah, and her yeah. body was just Shutting down, freaking yeah. out. Yeah. And um, when I did that, it kind of brought some peace and calm and stability to so her. So that's similar to Reiki in some way. Yeah. And I mean, are they connected? That was just your way of delivering the energy. Yes. So whether it's Reiki or any other energy healing mm -hmm. modality, it's all a matter of Reiki uses a lot of symbols. So people resonate with those symbols. I do something different. It's all the same in the fact that you are creating an, an entrainment factor. So you're bringing a high vibrational state so that the cells can then, or whatever, can entrain up to that, ex that state. Yeah, now when you talked about sort of your, you were on your way to see this person, you were sort of building this energy up, sort of getting your head full of steam, so to speak. And were you activating your energy centers, your uh, chakras, in an effort to sort of build up the energy to get to that spot where you could produce? Right, so I use a lot of breath work mm -hmm. and moving the energy. So yes, you're using your whole energetic system, which also includes the chakra system where it's you're bringing it through. And what I was doing was increasing, like bringing my vibrational state higher and higher and higher and concentrating that energy and making it move faster and faster within me so that I could then facilitate that to somebody else. So you really are almost like a kind of like a, a, um, a defibrillator. You know, you're kind of coming with the paddles and going boom on the person, and then they're sort of coming out of it because you're interested. So that's a, an interesting way of, of 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 using that. How would someone else use it in your in your life? You think? Well, there's. This is a good segue into um, when we look at how our minds think, our mindset, and how our like as within, so without, right? right, right. right? Mm -hmm. When we are, our thoughts become things, mm -hmm. our thoughts become our reality. When we take a look at that, um, Dr. Bruce Lipton, absolutely love him. He was a cell biologist. I did some cell biology, uh, cell culture when, yeah. when I was in biology and chemistry. And it's real that what we think becomes our reality and what we, keep ourselves in, the environment that we keep ourselves in, inside, is the environment that we're keeping ourselves in outside. outside. And the if macro you, is the reflected in the mi micro. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So when you take a look at that, how do you change where you want to, what you want to, what you want to, you want to manifest into, yes. right? How do you change? And you've got to change that mindset. So the mindset and changing the mindset and bringing it more positively is just like working that energy through. So, and then being able to deliver it. That's, a, that's quite a challenge, it seems like. I mean, it's not yeah. easy. I mean, I think someone like such as yourself, because you started so young and had a natural ability, it probably seems second nature. But the average person probably has a hard time drawing up those energies and, and concentrating them in a way that you need to be in order for that time. I and mean, we, we all have bursts of adrenaline. You know, if you saw your son running into the street, you'd go dash and pull him in, of course, you know, it'd be very scary. And that would be adrenaline. And people, like I mentioned before, letting themselves out of cars or whatever, superhuman situations because they're ex expending so much energy in a concentrated form to solve a problem. This is really a self-directed, you can actually have to, you're saying that you have the ability to turn it off and on. It's not necessarily tied to an event. This is just you have the desire to do it, which allows you to take that energy and then boom, boom, do this to the fork. <laughs> right. Um, which looked like this a minute ago. Um, <laughs> that to me is just astounding. So what, what do people, um, when they come to learn this from you, what is their purpose? What do they hope to gain from it? So when it comes to the, the fork bending, they're learning something, how to tap into their own internal power. Call up that power. Right. Mm -hmm. How to access and then how to be able to turn it on, turn it off um, and become more aware. Okay. So there's a huge awareness factor and just like transforming your own life, you have to become aware of what is going on. What are your patterns? What are your triggers? And then what to do about those things because being present is utmost important. So you have to really be of a mindset where you want to have the, you want to be motivated to change. You have to be, be motivated to change. You have to really want it. And then you have to be able to concentrate and remove the external static that goes on in your head and try to get this into a place where you can concentrate that focus. Um, right. It seems hard to me to do. Um, perhaps I'm an easily distracted person and I'm, in, you know, and I'm, in, I'm easily stimulated by other things. Um, 
I don't know if I could do that in the way you say, um, the, uh, bringing up that sort of energy. People learn differently, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that I work very one-on-one -on -one with people, a very tailored, when I'm working with them in more of the coaching sense in for that element, where we take what your situation is, how do you learn, what are those, I, as you're talking to me, I can then figure out what are these pieces that are subconscious and what are the triggers. And through asking and different questions and having a dialogue, I can then show you, well, what if we looked at it differently? What mm -hmm. if we looked at it like this? And then it makes sense where something that was in front of somebody for so long, they look at me and they say, oh. well, I never thought of it like that. Easy, yeah. <laughs> so it can be very easy. And when we're stuck in certain patterns that we have, it's not our fault. But when we can become aware of it, and break out, then we can say, oh, wow, look at that. Mm -hmm. Now I can do something about it. Okay. So do people come to you to s uh, for this sort of um, skill set to change their, their, their jobs, their relationships, their careers, their health? I mean, any number of things, right? They really want, they come to you n wanting to uh, have a change to begin with. Right. They've already, they've already made up their mind. They want to change and they think that you can help them get there through this process. And they need some sort of a, 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 sort of a spiritual wake up in order to, you know, an epiphany of sorts, in order to get to the place where they can say, yes, I want to do this. And when they do that, they are saying, I'm going to change my life. And then they use this power to leave their jobs or leave their bad relationships or whatever, right? Is that how it works? Or just make a change within the job to get wh where they where want they to be. Go. Okay. Right, so there's, um, there's actually five pillars of success within mm -hmm. my Alchemy of Transformation program. And we take a look at, depending on where you want to be, a lot of people feel like there's one or two places that they want to focus on, whether it is um, the mindset, the job, so money, that's money, right? usually mm -hmm. money, mm -hmm. um, the communication and relationships aspect of things, health and wellness, mm -hmm. um, all these different pieces, and they, they just really come together more like cogs where or how I usually talk about it is there's you have a, your wheel on your car you can't just clamp down on one and tighten that bolt up bolt, right you got to tighten them all up yeah you have to do a little bit here a little bit here a little bit here and go all the way around and in doing that you're tweaking 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 so you're moving it more in this circular fashion forward because a lot it's of cumulative. time, it is. So you're starting with one to get the first nut on, and the, or the first chakra tuned up, and that leads to the next. You work They're all interlaced. interlaced. That's yeah, why. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times people think, well, my relationships, I I, I have bad relationships. I want to move into a relationship where with somebody that can appreciate me. Mm -hmm. Well, if your mindset, your subconscious patterns, turn your mindset into I'm not worthy. Right. You're going to attract the same person over and over and over again, even though you want something different. So how does someone change that? If they have, that, if they have a low opinion of themselves, how do they change that? And, and this sort of process, look, look at what your mind can do. You have the mind over matter. You were able to do this, so why can't you change your mind about that? That's right. how you use it as an illustrative example. Yeah, so I have um, a, a three-step process mm -hmm. that goes along with that. It's my three-step air process. The first step is becoming aware. So it's the awareness of what are those subconscious patterns and then identifying the triggers that go along with that because we have to be aware of how we react to these different triggers mm -hmm. and how we react we that awareness of that lets us then reprogram and restructure what we do and then through that because you're changing that inner core your outer world then follows suit mm -hmm. They have to be motivated to do this. Someone has to be self-driven to do this. They've wanted, they really want to change. And typically, in my experience with, with clients, people always come to me when, there's, when they're at a turning point or at a, at a crux point or a milestone where they have to make a decision about which way to go, left or right, like a fork in the road. And so they have to be motivated to come to it from that point of view to begin with. So they're probably more open to doing it and willing to take that challenge. But it still is a very, because it's not really 
you can't define it. And you can define it with words, but you can't go in and move this to there in your head right. to get things to work right. It's not mechanically involved. It's all emotional and thought-based. So you've got to be able to harbor up enough in, uh, emotion and impetus and motivation to get that done. That must be difficult for people. But I think this does show you that you have the power to do that. I mean, because you've, you've, you've given the example of here's literally a, a, a time where I'm taking my energy that I just talk, talked about and I'm bending this fork. Right. And it's pretty remarkable that you were able to do that. Um, I mean, when you did that, you just, boom, it just went. Right. The window opens up. I mean, you can try it. I'm not sure I can do it. Though. I mean, supposing I can't do it. I'm not going to be on TV not it's do okay. it. It's no, okay. No, it's okay. No, I know. I, I think I'll let you try it. <laughs> Just to be on the safe side. I don't want people to think I'm a wimp and I can't bend the fork. <laughs> it's funny because in the class, um, it's, a, it's usually a three-hour class that yeah. I do. And I go over different techniques. And the, there will always be that one person that hasn't done it. And I sit there and, and I've watched, most of the time I've watched them get there and then just not go like over that. the edge. And the last technique is something that's very, very different. And they're that 1% that will then... Get it. Yeah, they'll <laughs> get it right there. Wow. <laughs> so, I mean, and the, and the people who are coming to you are coming to you for the reasons I mentioned earlier, right? They're sort of they're looking for guidance, they're looking for right. some external tools to help shape their life. Right, and you mentioned, you know, them being driven. Um, there's a few different pieces that, you know, the elements that people have within them when they're ready. So most people will, they'll do things and they'll get, they'll be getting ahead, getting ahead, getting ahead. And then it's like, all of a sudden they get slapped back. And then they go, we'll try it again, we'll try it again, and they get snapped back again. And it just feels like life is just beating, beating you up. Down, right? and beating down, until they get to that point where they're either ready to give up or they're ready to try it one more time and be coachable. Because what's happening is that weakest piece, so of those five pillars, mindset, positioning, health and wellness, um, abundance and prosperity and communication and relationships, those five pieces, they have to move with each other like we talked about. So usually it's something that's subconscious that people don't realize is affecting different areas. And, and you that's what's deteriorating. That's the bungee cord that's pulling them back. And so how do you discover that? Just through constant talking and uh, just going through that? I mean, how do you discover what their weak point is and how you bolster that up? Well. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the origin comes in. <laughs> I actually, I don't need that for that, but when I have a conversation with somebody, I'm feeling through their energy mm -hmm. of what their goals are. And then I'll ask them different questions, and based on the answers that I get, I can then hone in on what is actually going on, and then I can identify these are the areas where I feel we need to start with. It might be, might be something completely different than what somebody came to me for. So somebody might come to me for a relationship thing. And then I delve into asking the questions, getting the answers, mm -hmm. going a little bit deeper. And then it, it might be exposed that, OK, well, m mindset, m m m m mindset, like m m m Max Hedrum. Right, right, right. Mindset <laughs> and communication is then also being a real big factor in why we can't get there. Okay. Or there might be some other elements that, that crop up and we just do those little tweaks. Well, let's see yeah. where we need to start with. But and it's then about that change. More than, and about change and being empowered to make the change. And Absolutely. oftentimes I tell people, because they do come to me for astrology on about when I should change or why can't I change or when can I get a new job, I always say that oftentimes people will stay in a relationship or a job for a long time because it's familiar and it's easy and it's predictable to some extent. It's predictable. You know, if you go to work, you, you're going to be treated a certain way. And people become comfortable with that sometimes. Yes. And what they don't know, even though they may not like where they are, what they don't know is what's on the other side and what that might look like. And so it's always this fear between going from what you are, don't like and how do I change it to getting across that border because you don't know what's on the other side of the door. It may be something fantastic. You may wish that you had changed. And once you get across the threshold, you're like, why didn't I do this three years ago? And you right. have these kind of questions. And you're like, why? I wasted so much time. So I think that, first of all, is probably acknowledging that you have the problem or you have the desire. Right. And then finding a way to the tool 
to get in there to actively make that change and have the courage, because it does require courage, I think. But it this does. probably does build up your courage. We do build your confidence. We build up you being empowered, uh, conquering the fears, because the fears are just this energy that's holding on to these negative patterns mm -hmm. that hold you back. So realizing, and, and once you become aware of that and the triggers that that cause you yeah. to react certain ways. It's very easy to reprogram. Mm. I've had people come to me and literally just in one session completely have things that change their lives. Calling me up saying this miracle happened. Well, you created that miracle because you then changed the energetic pattern of what's happening. I've had people oh. call me up money-wise in dire, desperate situations that I don't even know what to do. I this is it. This is the end yeah, of like me. A deer in the headlights. Yeah. And you know, I need X amount of thousands of dollars in order to just get out of this little this one pothole that I have. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, well let's work on that. And then working through that because there's a certain element of that going into that survival mode and giving in to your fear now. And when you can overcome that piece, just tweaking and tweaking and tweaking. I've had people in that one, two, or three sessions call me up with different things that happened, miracles happening, somebody they don't even really know coming up to them and giving them a bunch of money. Wow. Like that doesn't happen. No, or at the checks in the mail thing, right. that's happened to me mm -hmm. where I wanted to do something for myself. I tossed it out to the universe and said, well, I need a thousand dollars to do this for, for myself, for something that I want to do for me. And just bring it. And just being open to that. And it was one of those things I laughed because it was a check in the mail. My credit card had given me $997 wow. back. Wow, pretty accurate. You just thought <laughs> right. what you asked for. I mean, you should have said, I went, where's the other three? <laughs> <laughs> right? I think I found that in oh, change. Okay, so it, it, was, it, was very, um, it was very funny. That's amazing. Yeah, I can see that. You know, I think oftentimes people get stuck in patterns, and it's hard to get out of the pattern. It's hard to get out of the way because it becomes familiar. Yes. You know, you, you, people have worries about money. I worry about money all the time, especially being in this field, esoteric fields. It's not known for the, being a, a profitable field. So you worry about these things, and, and you almost sometimes it becomes a, a familiar thought pattern that you can't shake the pattern. So I think something like this would allow you to shake the pattern because you say, wow, I do actually have power to shake this, to change this. Right. And that would be really critical, I think. And so that's where there's probably the best benefit of this comes right. into. So people do come to you saying, I want to change my life. I want to get a new job. I want to get out of my relationship. Those are the kinds of questions they ask. And then right. you go through the fourth ending, the, the psychokinesis process, and boom. Pretty so much, it's like, it's, it's the alchemy of transformation is like applying the psychokinesis energetics to your mindset mm -hmm. and changing that and turning it into the positive mindset, opening up your personal window of quantum physics. And uh, we all have these tools within yeah, us. We all absolutely. Have all, they're all within our disposal. Yes. Wow, fascinating. Really interesting. And your, in your movie, your book here is called Fork This, Bend That. This is probably a way to do that. You can figure it out. Anyway, what an interesting thing. I'm going to pause on taking the fork bending this time, but I will do it again. I really do want to try it again. So I'll be down to see you and get my, I'm going to bend my fork. So anyway, to bend Nicole uh, Magic was here today to talk about that. Thank you so much for coming Thanks, on Chris. today. Thanks for tuning in and watching the show and be sure to watch the next one.